Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to our video series on using separating hyperplane theorem proofs in economics. In this video, we're going to work through um, our second example, which is going to be a small uh, second welfare theorem proof. Let's go. So this is a second welfare theorem for exchange economies. Let each consumer lowercase i in our set of total consumers capital I have an endowment omega i, which is going to be in our positive real number space in n dimensions where the consumption set for each consumer is defined by xi, which is in our n-dimensional real number space. Suppose that utility functions for each consumer ui are continuous, quasi-concave, and strictly increasing. If xi hat, right, for each consumer i, uh, where xi hat is not equal to zero is pretty efficient, then there exists a price vector p, which is greater than or equal to zero, such that if we have our x right some other bundle xi being greater than or equal to ui of xi hat right which is going to be our pre efficient uh, allocations which are non-zero that's going to imply that this alternative bundle is going to be more expensive so before we proceed we're going to remind ourselves what the structure of the separating hyperplane theorem proofs at least in the way i've defined it is that we're going to first have to define a separation in our allocated environment based on our definitions. Then we're going to go and apply the separating hyperplane theorem, which will bring P into existence. We're then going to prove our price vector P is non-negative if this is not a requisite condition, which is crucial in economics. And step number four is that we're going to use objects from our set to go and complete the proof here. So we're going to have to define a separation in our allocative environment based on our definitions. So the way we're going to do this is that we're going to define a set of possible pre improvements from allocation X hat for individual I as follows. So our individual is going to be maximizing his utility um, by going and picking X such that it does not go and negatively impact the utilities of our other agents in our economy and our resource constraint is satisfied here. Since UI is strictly increasing, then it will be the case that the sum of the, this allocation X hat is going to be equal to the sum of endowments that we go and have here. It follows that the solution lies on the boundary of the set where X, right, is going to be such that it's VI X, right, which is going to be this value function evaluated at this bundle X is going to be greater than this value function evaluated at this endowment here. So step number two is that we're going to go and apply our separating hyperplane theorem. So this just follows from our set that we go and we have there that we're going to go and pick our object X and our object Omega here for in each of these sets. And we're going to go and just drop them in directly. And that's going to imply existence of a price vector such that P of X is greater than or equal to P Omega. Step number three is that we're going to prove our price vector P is non-negative if it is not a requisite condition. So the way we do this is by defining a vector delta being greater than zero. If P is less than zero, then it must be that V of X plus delta is greater than V of X since, you know, we're, this function is increasing in X. And since P is going to be negative, right? P is of times X plus delta is going to be less than p times x which is a contradicts the separating hyperplane theorem so that means the signs that we go and we have here right the inequalities that we go and we have must be the same according to the separating hyperplane theorem which we go and we present in step number two so next is that you know we've already used our separating hyperplane theorem we're going to use our objects from our sets to go and complete this proof here now we have the following result and we have this idea here now remember in step number one we went and we noted that this omega is going to be equal to x hat right i just dropped out the sum notation here just to keep things in vector form and if we go and we plug in that result right and we note what is the properties of vi here right which is this going to be a set of uis or uis evaluated at those optimums we go and we get the following result here which is exactly what the second welfare theorem goes and states, which is the end of our proof. So um, this is our second example of using the separating hyperplane theorem in economics, this time proving a simple uh, second welfare theorem, right? Just for exchange economies, no production here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.